In beginning bands, most trombonists will play on an instrument that looks like this, a simple pipe with no valves. In high school and college bands, however, students will often play an instrument with this extra set of pipe and a valve, sometimes called a trigger, activated by the left hand thumb. Today I'm going to talk about the differences between these instruments and how to help students make the transition from one to the other. While it may seem that the mere existence of the valve is the biggest change between one to the other, younger students will notice the size difference more. This instrument is much lighter than the larger one, and so younger students who are smaller will find it easier to hold this instrument. When students move to the larger instrument, not only is it heavier, but the thumb is now used on this valve and cannot support the weight of the instrument. Some students will try and use their shoulders or their bodies somehow to support the weight of the instrument, and that will, in the long run, lead to bad sounds and eventually back pain. There's also the question of bore size. On the smaller instrument, the pipe is only one half of one inch in diameter. This one is 0.547, which wouldn't seem like a big difference, but it really is. It's a 10% difference. And on the bass trombone and euphonium, the differences are even greater. If you think about a young student who is maybe five feet tall starting this instrument and then needing to move to an instrument with 10% more pipe to fill with air, you would want that student to maybe be 10% bigger. So from five feet to five six. Think about that when you're deciding when to transition students to the larger instruments. I recommend you wait for the growth spurt so that they are more likely to be ready for the additional physical demands of the larger instruments. Let's talk about the valve itself. Because the distance between the notes available in the overtone series gets wider in the low register, there is a gap where you can't play any notes at all on the trombone. Starting in first position, on my second partial B flat, I can go down by half step to seventh position where I find an E. After that, I run out of slide, and so I have to come back into first and to the first partial where I have a B flat. So there's a tritone of space in there where I can't play. The valve, however, adds about the same amount of tubing as the slide in sixth position. So instead of coming to my F and then my E and running out of slide, I can go to my F in sixth and then come back into the E in trigger second and proceed. There's a catch though. Students have spent years learning where their seven positions are, and it's in their muscle memory. Positions on the valve are farther apart and therefore in different places than their positions without the valve. Students who go for a C in sixth position will be very surprised when they try and get that same C in sixth position with the trigger. Here's the C without the trigger. And then I put the trigger down, and it's very, very sharp. In fact, sixth position on the trigger is all the way at the very end of the slide. So we find that the trombone without the trigger has seven positions, but the trombone with the trigger has only six. That means that there is no B natural still available, but all the rest of the notes are provided by the trigger. Students will have to learn these new positions. They will have to practice putting their slide in the right spot with the valve and without the valve to learn the difference. There's another catch also. In order to get that low sixth position at the very end of the slide, on most instruments, the trigger itself is tuned a little flat. And so that first position is not exactly the same as sixth position on the slide. Usually the C is okay. 
but on most instruments, the F, the low F, in first position on the trigger is very flat. And because it's flat, and it's already in first position, you can't raise the slide. And so that F is not a recommended note. The F attachment on the bass trombone does the same thing as the F attachment on the tenor trombone. But there is also a second attachment to be played with the third finger on the left hand. In combination with the F attachment, this provides a D in first position, which eventually gives access to the B natural further out on the slide. All the problems of the single attachment on the tenor trombone are amplified with the two valves on the bass trombone. For one, it's significantly heavier. When I play bass trombone, I actually have an extra grip that I use to help support the weight, and I recommend that you find such a device for your students as well. The tuning challenges are three times as hard, in addition to the slide positions on the open horn and on the F attachment, there is now a new set of slide positions for the G-flat attachment and yet another set of position locations for the double trigger. Bass trombone is not like the bass clarinet. Any B-flat clarinet player might be asked to play bass clarinet for a concert or for a semester, but bass trombonists are usually dedicated. Once a student is switched from tenor trombone to bass trombone, they become a bass trombonist and only play bass trombone. A lot of times bands will seat players from top to bottom where the best players play the first part and the weakest players play the third part, and sometimes I see those third part players handed a bass trombone and told to play it. But I think that is detrimental. Bass trombone is a difficult instrument to play. It requires a great ear, it requires great air support, and a great sound. A student who is getting a weak sound or does not have the strength to play some of the higher notes on the tenor trombone will have an even more difficult time playing the bass trombone. I recommend choosing a strong player who is interested in the bass trombone, a strong player who likes the low notes, and switching them to bass trombone and giving them extra help, dedicating them to learning this beast of an instrument. Most of the additional notes available on the trigger and double trigger are not found in band and orchestra music, especially at the high school level. The advantage of the trigger is really one of facility. Everyone remembers how difficult it was for the sixth graders to play just a B-flat major scale. Getting the slide all the way out there is a challenge, and getting it in tune out there is an even bigger challenge, especially for, for younger students. With the trigger and the C in first position, this becomes much easier. Access to these notes, closer in on the slide, allows trombonists to play more technical material. Because one of the characteristics of the trombone sound is the open, free-blowing tone color, I do not recommend having students use the valve above that C in first position, the second space on the bass clef staff. Using the trigger above that does not actually provide any necessary facility because the slide positions are already close enough, but it does impact the sound quality for that student. At about the same time that trombone students switch to instruments with F attachments, euphonium students switch to instruments with four valves. And the fourth valve does the same thing as the F attachment on the trombone. It's about the same tubing length as one and three, and it provides access to the lower notes. The other advantages on the euphonium, however, are very different where on the trombone, sixth and seventh positions can always be played in tune by adjusting the slide. The fixed tubing lengths on the euphonium make one and three very sharp, and one, two, and three even sharper. The fourth valve, however, can be independently tuned to get that low F and C in tune, and then two and four is a much better alternative to one, two, and three. Intonation continues to be the primary concern in the upper register, Notes that are out of tune in their natural 
combinations can be mitigated with alternatives involving the fourth valve. In the low register, where trombones had to learn new positions on the F attachment, the euphonium offers an alternative. Compensating euphoniums have another set of tubes attached to the backs of the valves, which are activated with the fourth valve. This adds that extra length necessary to bring these combinations into tune. If you remember that C that I played in sixth position on the trombone, which was then very sharp in sixth position with the valve, this is not a problem on the euphonium. Here's my C1 and 3, which, as we already said, is a little sharp. Here it is on fourth valve, better in tune, and then here it is 1, 3, and 4. Let's talk very briefly about what might be important if you were looking to purchase instruments for your school. In general, on the trombone, higher price points translate to slides that work better and a clearer, more vibrant sound color. On the euphonium, higher price points translate to better intonation. There are a few features that I think are indispensable. On the trombone, look for a .547 bore size. You will find others. You will find 0 .500, 0 .508, 0 .525, um, even maybe a dual bore 0 .5, 547 and 562. Just go with the 0.547. That is the standard, at least in the United States. Also, there are an awful lot of different kinds of valves, and all the different brand names and terminology can be confusing. Most of them are pretty good. They all have their own advantages and disadvantages. So long as it's not a standard rotor, you're going to be fine. A standard rotor will cause students to have to struggle against the valve and they will get a much more closed off, muddy sound quality when they play on the valve. For the euphonium, you really need it to be compensating. A non-compensating euphonium will have your students playing out of tune regularly. The other thing to look for is that valve on the left hand. Four inline valves can be cheaper, but the fourth valve played by the fourth finger on the right hand is difficult and students will lose facility. Thank you for watching. For more information, for extra resources and some exercises to help your students, I invite you to check out the PDF handout available from my website, tenorposana.com.